Shazam! Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to Under the Velt here, and today we are watching yet again another Star Trek movie, Star Trek Generations. Mm -hmm. We are finished with the original series. Yeah. The last one was... Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. The Undiscovered Country, which I liked a lot. That's probably my favorite, next to Star Trek IV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That and what was Star 4 Tr called? The Final Frontier? No, that's 5. That's 4 five. is The Journey Home. The, jo the Journey Home? The journey home. I mean, I'm sorry. I think it's the voyage home. Yeah, the voyage. Home. Yeah, I'm like that sounded weird. Like, but I was saying, this is generation. Just a generation. So this is the first uh, movie with the next gen cast. Yeah, and right? uh, I think you've all. I think you've only had a little bit of exposure to next gen crew, right? You said you watched a little bit of I'm one of the Q episodes. With, yeah, I mainly I mainly watched this episode. I I watched a couple episodes with the Q because the Q's only stand out in that show for me at the at this moment because I haven't really delved into that show mm -hmm. i know wesley crusher was a character in it because will we you know plays himself on big bang theory which i'm yeah. sure i have watched so i know about him and his shit i also know about mr data mm -hmm. um i know about jonathan frakes characters because of an interview that he did with michael rosenbaum on inside of you podcast that's mm -hmm. a good podcast i endorse it you should definitely check it um i like yeah so i i pretty much know with characters I, I know also that um lavar burton is in it yeah I know, yes. I, I pretty much know most people who's in it. Of course, you know, I mean, Patrick Stewart, no shit. Oh, yeah. As Jean-Luc Picard. Uh, quite a few Star Trek fans, like real Star Trek fans, actually prefer him over Kirk. Oh, yeah, that's very common. I think you mean, you like, real Star Trek nerds really prefer Kirk over, um... They even was a thing in Big Bang Theory when um, Sheldon met Leonard for the first time. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions to him to enter, be able to enter his house when he was, like, viewing his apartment was like, uh, who do you prefer, Kirk or Picard? And Leonard <laughs> answered... Uh, start original original cast original Star Trek over next gen, but Picard over Kirk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. And he was like, "Okay, you you may enter." <laughs> so I assume that's I assume that's the zeitgeist for most Star Trek aficionados and nerds. Yes and no. Like those those are like very common ones for like who was your favorite captain? Cisco seen a resurgence in like popularity ever since that episode aired. So that's more popular for the time the episode was made than it is mm -hmm. now. You know, actually, you know, one thing, actually, they have never talked about DS9 like, like that. They've never, they yeah, I've never noticed the, them. They may, they may only be talking about Next Gen. Yeah, this Next Gen and original. original cast, that's the yeah. only thing I've They never talked about Voyager. They never talked about, they never talked about um the fucking Voyager. They never talked no. about fucking, um, about fucking DS9. No, or Enterprise, which I'm pretty sure Enterprise is ending as DS, as a Big Bang was starting. So you figured they'd have something to say about yeah, that. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's like the last... It's like the last show in uh, production. For a long right? time, yeah. yeah Until all all Discovery all happened, yeah. yeah. For all the new ones. That's Don Perignon. Yeah, that's some fancy shit. Yeah. gentlemen, we've just cleared the asteroid belt. Our course today will take us out beyond Pluto and then back to space dock. Just a quick run around the block. Captain, will there be time to conduct any tests on the warp drive system? We're picking up a distress call, Captain. On, on speakers. This is the transport ship Lacou. We're caught in some energy distortion. Two ships in our convoy. The Lakul is one of two ships transporting Alorian refugees to Earth. Ensign Sulu, can you locate them? The ships are bearing at 310 Mark 215. Distance, three light years. Signal the closest starship. We're in no condition to mount a rescue. <laughs> we don't That's even have a... so not what he would do. No. 
<laughs> Kirk would go in if his shirt if it's like near destroyed already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that movie. He just got like, yo, what? <laughs> yeah, he just he didn't even have to say anything. He just stood up like <laughs> No. Like. I got forty seven out of one hundred fifty. Fuck. I mean a third is better than nothing, I guess. That's still terrible. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Still be terrible. Still be terrible. Forty one died. Mm -hmm. Malcolm McDowell. It's yep. all right. You're safe. You're on the Enterprise. No, I have to go. I have to go you back. Stay right here. No, it's okay. no, You don't understand. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Please. <laughs> what was he talking about? I have no idea. Excuse me. Can I help you? Yeah. It's yep. Whoopi's <laughs> character. Mm hmm. Reprising a role from Next Generation. in the engineering section. Emergency force fields in place and holding. Where? Sections 20 through 28. On decks 13, 14, and 15. Bridge to Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk, please respond. Got to imagine taking all that steam to the face. I can't be comfortable. Rest in peace, Kirk. Bye. So that's that? Yep. Captain Zed. Okay. Captain has left the ship. <laughs> Is that the famous story of how he dies? And now a time skip. Mm-hmm. I'm saying to say all of those guys are dead. Yeah. <laughs> really, they're dangling above him, for real. <laughs> Walk the plank. One thing I've learned over the years is never to underestimate a Klingon. Computer, remove the plank! <laughs> <laughs> you dick. <laughs> Number one, that's retract plank, not remove plank. Of course, sir. 
<laughs> I think he did that on purpose. Sorry! It's very on brand for him. Cool, because I don't know how any of them act. You go be seen there. I must confess, I am uncertain as to why someone falling into freezing water is amusing. Oh, it's all in good fun, David. Fun? Fun. I do not understand. You've got to get into the spirit of things. Learn to be spontaneous. Live in the moment. Do something unexpected. So he still unexpected. hasn't learned after the whole get series it? how to embrace <laughs> human stuff? Okay. I think he had a whole series to grow, so why is that? Why things like that still foreign to him? Because that's his arc for the movies. Was not funny. Oh, fuck you, Jordy. It totally was. Data, you're not actually thinking about using that thing, are you? I have considered it for many months. And in light of my recent episode with Dr. Crusher, now may be the appropriate time. Thought you were worried about it overloading your neural net. That is true. However, I believe my growth as an artificial life form has reached an impasse. For 34 years, I have endeavored to become more human, to grow beyond my original programming. Still, I am unable to grasp such a basic concept as humor. This emotion chip may be the only answer. Oh my god, that's how his brain Listen, looks. Yep. The first sign of trouble. He's just a robot. I'm gonna deactivate it. Agreed. With Android 17. Agreed. Mm hmm. Well, 16, but yeah. Yeah, because they actually have human parts. We found human two human dead like Romulans on the station. Kill, go, go. Ram Something new from Focus 3? What? I believe this beverage has produced an emotional response. Really? What are you feeling? I am uncertain. Because I have had little experience with emotion, I am unable to articulate the sensation. Emotion? I'll explain later. Yep. Ooh. Well, it looks like he hates it. Yes. That is it. I hate I this. I hate this. <laughs> Dave, I think the chip is working. But he's still drinking it. <laughs> oh, yes. I hate this. It is revolting. Repulse. More? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Come take a look at this, will you? You ever seen a solar probe with this kind of configuration? No, Jordy, I have not. Have you? No, I have not. It is most unusual. <laughs> Mr. Tricorder. <laughs> Just to see if you can help me get these panels open, will you? Make it so. <laughs> Advisor's picking up something in the theater band. It could be a trilithium. It is like a Simpson right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so bright. You know, we don't have time for this. I cannot help myself. <laughs> I think something is wrong. <laughs> yep, it's taking a toll. The motion chip's fucking it up. Data, are you all right? I 
I believe the emotion chip has overloaded my positronic relay. We better get you back to the ship. The Force Enterprise. The Forge to Enterprise. Gentlemen, is there a problem? Dr. Soren. Yeah. There seems to be some sort of dampening field in here. It's blocking our comm signal. Can you shut it off for us? Of course. I'd be only too happy to. <laughs> yeah, that was obviously coming. <laughs> yeah. Malcolm McDowell is the bad guy. What? What a surprise. <laughs> You're not entirely confident you can shoot down my probe, so you've come to dissuade me from my horrific plan. <laughs> Good luck. Now, if you'll excuse me, Captain, I'm rather busy. Soren! <laughs> Do be careful, Captain. That's a 50 gigawatt force field. I wouldn't want to see you get hurt. Shit. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. It's gotta be the first time shit's been said in Star Trek. Especially by him. By anyone, I think. Of all characters. But yeah. You know, the whole motion chip is fuck with him. That's such a stupid fucking gun. Yeah, that's an, I interest, always hate that. that's an interesting looking blaster. It's like it's trying to be like the 90s fu fucking aim your gun sideways bullshit both lasers. I'm like, it's so it's too extra. It's trying too hard to be cool. It's just not. That's supposed to be cool. I think that's the intent. Oh, they they, wow. It's not a recreating Star Trek. Uh, it's a darkness. <laughs> yeah. Recreating a movie fucking de a decade and a half before it came out. Yeah, well, that, you know, I guess it's recreating this. <laughs> yep. To like, this is a ship plummeting to a planet. Yep. Everyone every don't really like Wesley Crusher because he thought he was a no-no. Yeah. So what, did he get right written off the show? Kinda, yeah. What happened? He, like, met this weird interdimensional guy called the Traveler and started hanging out with him. And just went interdimensional off guy? Huh? Guy? Yeah. He went, yeah, he went off with them to join him on his adventures and shit. In the multiverse? I don't think it's multiverse. It's just interdimensional, so what dimensions? Like, there's other dimen- like, other fucking dimensions- Like, he travels through dimensions and shit. I don't think he travels through universes. I'm pretty sure those are different. So kind of different dimensions, well, like, where, like, the fucking- The Q live and shit? Yeah, the Q continuum is an example of a different dimension, where the prophets live is another dimension. There's other ones, too. I thought he lived within a wormhole, but- Okay. Like an interdimensional wormhole? Yeah, they live in dimension inside of the wormhole. Oh, okay, so not in the wormhole, but say, just dimension. Yeah, the wormhole is basically just like a gateway to it. Okay. So, there's not even really wormholes, really. It's just designed like a wormhole, but really is a gate to another dimension. Well, it's both. It's both a wormhole and a gate to the dimension, because you can use it either way. Okay. Very climactic. <laughs> no sound at all. Just the straight audio. I know. So in Foley. And this really fake ass looking rock. <laughs> An obvious back screen of the rest of the landscape. Okay, something's in the sky. Yeah, it's the Nexus. Oh, cool. Yeah, that thing they've been talking about the whole movie, but they didn't no, no, actually I, show. I, I, I know what it is. It's just I wasn't really thinking about it. Yep. Now it's time to blow up the sun, killing, destroying the whole solar system. Cause yay! So that one missile is gonna blow up the fuckers. Okay. Yep. Sure. That's fast. Yep. Very it, fast. It didn't look like it was traveling that fast to get to the sun so quickly, but... Yeah, it looked like it was a barrel of the atmosphere, but nope, right to the sun. 90s. Yep, 90s. Yep. 
Sun's dead, slow system destroyed, bad guy wins. Yeah, looks like he's getting what he wants. Yep. Well, they're all dead. Yep, everyone's dead. All the characters you knew and loved from the show, all dead. No more movies. No more Star Trek. It's all dead. Cool. But I need help. Now, if you were to come back with me, together we... I can't we... leave. I'm there already, remember? But I bet I know someone who can. Gee, I wonder who it could be. Who else was sent to the Nexus, possibly earlier in the movie? <laughs> he's, he's pretty late. Yes. They marked his movie like, like he was going to really be in it. Yeah, but he shows up at the very beginning and like the last half hour. Yeah. That's it. At least it used to be. I sold it years ago. I'm Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Starship Enterprise. The clock. <laughs> okay, he's gonna brush that off. I gave this clock to Bones. I'm from what you would consider the future, the 24th century. <laughs> Butler. So I guess he's just as confused <laughs> as, as Picard was. Yep. He's been dead seven years. Come on, Jim, I'm starving. How long are you going to be rattling around in that kitchen? These are Katarian eggs, her favorite. I was preparing them. Some weird looking eggs. Look. Yep. I know how real this must seem to you. But it's not. This isn't really your house. We are both of us caught up in some kind of temporal nexus. Dill. I beg your pardon. Dillweed. In the cabin. Second shelf to the left. <laughs> Behind the oregano. Kirk doesn't want to deal with any of this shit. He just wants to make some eggs. How long have you been here? Well, I don't know. I was aboard the Enterprise B in the deflector control room. And I'm stir these, will you? <laughs> oh, the bulkhead in front of me disappeared, and then I found myself out there just now, chopping wood, right before you walked up. Thanks. Look, uh, history records that you died saving the Enterprise B from an energy ribbon 80 years ago. You say this is the 24th century? Uh -huh. And I'm dead. Not exactly. As I said, this is some kind of... The temporal, temporal nexus, nexus, yes, sir. I, uh, something is missing. So, this... So, in a way, he died is really how he actually died. In terms of the history books. Yeah, as far as history books but, are concerned. But really, he was here. Yeah, really, he's alive. Interesting. Yeah. We have to go back to our planet, Viridian 3. We have to stop a man called Soren from destroying a star. Millions of lives are at stake. You say history considers me dead. Who am I to argue with history? You're <laughs> a Starfleet officer. You have a duty. I don't need to be lectured by you. I was out saving the galaxy when your grandfather was in diapers. Besides which, I think the galaxy owns me one. <laughs> Wow. So they both have vastly different, vastly different philosophies. Oh, I guess <laughs> this whole generation thing's come in because he knows he's done. I mean, his time is came, came and went. Yeah, he's finally he's finally after, accepted retirement. After all these movies, this man has finally accepted he's done. Like, it didn't need an hour and three minutes just to mock out to actually achieve his plan. Well, that could have happened, like, 40 minutes ago. It absolutely could have. 50 minutes ago. Well, 
Yeah, this is this is bad writing. This is bad structure. Definitely. The structure of this movie is terrible. Yeah, this is probably the worst one so far. I must have jumped that 50 times. Scared the hell out of me each time. Except this time. Because it isn't real. Antonia. She isn't real either, is she? Nope. Nothing here is. Yeah, that's the problem. Nothing yeah. It's not real. Matters. Kirk. You were literally yeah, bitching and moaning uh, to all of your friends about this exact conundrum in Star Trek V when they were all feeling happy because they got to let go of their pain. It's basically the same thing, only now you're going through it. Oh, you've got to be confused. Just who the hell are you? He's James T. Kirk. Wait, don't you recognize him? You <laughs> You're on his ship 80 years ago. I gotta get to the launch truck. The ribbon will be here in a minute. I'll take care of Soren. Yeah, I hate this idea of baby bringing them back. This is so if this is marketing. It made sense since it's living lie because of how he lived his life. It would have been poetic, you know what I mean? Yeah. And sad and heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Oh, people don't know how to write. Ooh. Wow. Dropped it. We have time because he's uh, strung up there. Captain, look! We're solid. Is Kirk more legend because of the show or the movies? I'd say. Ooh, I'd say probably the show. Okay. You know, shows only last three seasons? Yeah. And the movie spanned over a decade? Again, three seasons back in the 60s. That, that was a lot was a more back deal. then. Yeah. yeah. Were shows back then going for longer seasons, like MASH or... MASH wasn't a thing yet. MASH wasn't a thing until after this, until like a but, decade I mean, after this. some shows back then. Yeah, like a small handful at most. Not a lot. About to do a Kirk. So, let me say Kirk is probably the most legendary character, most legendary television character of all time. Or at least in the top, top tier. Like top Lee. five, top three. Like, him and Spock are both very fucking legendary. Actually, the, actually no, I think the early example of character that could be Robin Hood, if I think about it. So that's basically who Robin Hood is. He's been around for fucking ever. Woo! Well, Sign Kirk! Again? Yep, again. See, he's alive. He's blinking and shit. Did we do it? Oh, is he gonna stay alive? Oh yes, we made a difference. Thank you. At least I could do. For the captain of the Enterprise.
kwa mani. Killed him off twice in the same movie. Is that the actual official end of him? Yep. Bye bye, Kirk. So no one knows that Kirk went to, went to the nexus point. I suppose as not. As far as I know, that's how this this guy, this legend, dies. Yeah. I'm actually I, I'm curious. Did Picard ever like write about it in his mission logs that he famously always keeps? I have no idea if he did because he never brings this up once, ever. Yeah, I didn't really care for this one. No. This movie is kind of frustrating to watch, yeah, to be I mean, honest. It was, it's kind of tapping on something good when they first met in the in the Nexus, but then, yeah, they kind of fucked it up by bringing him back. Mm -hmm. And killing him off again is like, eh. <laughs> in a very, like... Um, it's very, it, it just feels so lame. Yeah, it feels anticlimactic for this legend. That's how he goes out. Yeah. That's kind of like... He just dies on the bridge. That spans through, like, decades <laughs> through film and television. I mean... Mm, yeah. It's kind of anticlimactic, anti you know? Oh, crazy anticlimactic. It's... It's really just not good. <laughs> <laughs> epic character like him needs to go out epically, you know what I mean? Because he's all about the epic, you know? Mm -hmm. And even if... It, and honestly, it'd have been even epic for him to, like... Because it would become a shock to you. No, I, I want to live in this fantasy. That... I can buy that. That... I feel that. It's emotional. I can make sense for the character. Because he missed a lot of time, mm -hmm. a lot of regrets. So I was like, hey, I lived my time. Time for you to do yours. Hence, generations. That would have made the make me even more sense. Yeah. Yeah, this is just, yeah, this, is, a, this is bad. Yeah, but so they team up for a kind of lame team up against Malcolm McDowell, which goes yeah. horribly. It was a really boring fight, really lame, boring plot. Mm hmm. This one sucks. Yeah. And if you just say, hey, you, 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 talk, you, talk to the, you talk with the whole movie, you didn't get it. No, I pay attention. Yeah. I know what it's, happened. I just reiterated the plot. Well, somewhat. It was not interesting. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, not like, it's like we're not paying attention to this fucking movie. We, ha yeah. we are. We know exactly everything that's happening in the movie. I feel the movie. Like we it's have not... more interesting than this movie itself. Yeah, it is. Like, the only interesting thing about the movie is it sets up Data's ongoing storyline with his emotion chip. I guess even that's, that's kind of, like, yeah, man, that, that, annoying to me. It is, because it, to it totally messes with the movie. And it totally fucks up the pacing. Because on top of starting your movie late because you had to spend a lot of time establishing Kirk's death, yeah, yeah. You didn't have you didn't add in this new subplot while you're trying to establish not only your main character, your main antagonist, but also your main protagonist. Uh, you're so ending up a whole bunch of different shit at once, and it's just very cluttered and it's not sure, satisfying. But even, but even the data to me is not all that, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, he had some good moments, but others just went on yeah, too to long. Yeah, to me, I feel like it gets kind of annoying after a while. Yeah, the whole thing. At first, I'm like, I mean, I feel like it's just, it's just a too, it's too gimmicky. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. And on top of it, it's like, I mean, this, this is all this this is whole seven series, so seven season series, and he's now going through this kind of thing. It seems like there's something that should yeah. have been growing within him throughout the series. He's ready to be at some kind of point. Where well, he was. He, he was kinda, at a point where he was ready to tackle the motion chip. Period. Before that, he was he he was expanding on what he did without it, what he could do without oh, so it. Oh, so now he's like, okay, I'm just gonna fully take it. Yeah, that's what but, he said in the. That's what he said in this movie. Yeah. Okay, I mean, to me, it just seems like he should already had that growth already, even without the motion chip. Fair enough. I'm not really. I don't, I don't really know the intricacies of how he works. Mm-hmm. But to me, it felt like him becoming human should have been like more within the show itself. And at this point, you should have had kind of already had it locked down. It shouldn't be a thing again. But I said I already know how the show does it, so. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, fair enough. Yeah. Um, but for what I seen, it just didn't. It, it didn't add anything to this movie. It, I, but even that alone was like, I don't think it was handled well. No. Because you know? a lot of time it was played for laughs when, like, sometimes it is funny, but even though, like, this isn't a movie that really should be all that funny because it's trying to establish something very serious. Like, it's trying to establish, like, oh, no, we have Malcolm McDowell's here and he's going to blow up entire <laughs> solar systems. And you're trying to establish that as a threat and you're undercutting yeah. of humor. Yeah, that's cool, but I'm talking about the, his plot in it. They didn't find itself. Not saying the other shit I don't like neither, but right, I'm talking about specifically the data shit too. Could we on that? I thought we moved past that. Be honest. Yeah, now we're thinking about it. You kind of didn't read just that point. You kind of just moved on. Yeah, because what more else is there to say? No, 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 no,
add to what is your consent is well you kind of already said it but like my thing is like even the even the data stuff to me wasn't really that interesting not because of other factors of the story that alone was not handled well in the yeah. story is what i'm saying it's barely a factor in the story and just it feels like filler it shouldn't be there yeah okay sure but i'm, I'm saying that the story started on itself was not handled well i'm not talking about like in kind of context of the rest of the story mm-hmm. you know what i mean specifically that alone too within that wasn't done well that could have been done better as a storyline in itself it's like, even if it just added into the story and filler for filler that could have been still done better in a more interesting way yes it could have even in a movie movie like this like they're trying to cram in so many things it, it doesn't have any time for filler so it makes all the filler worse in this movie sure because again like you're starting late because you had to spend a whole bunch of time on Kirk at the very beginning and then you're fucking you're establishing this whole new threat a whole new concept behind this threat and also you're setting up this whole emotional turmoil for Picard that happens off fucking screen because of course it does and it's like you're you're, st- you're 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 throwing a whole bunch of the audience at once. Even they are familiar with this. It's just not enough to emotionally resonate with any of it. It's just a cluttered cluster of a movie. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I never cared for this movie. But, I, but that's okay because at least First Contact is good. It's the one good next generation movie. Yeah. So uh, it would be cool to see that. And that will be the last Star Trek movie tackle. Yeah. I don't think we, have a, we definitely don't have anything to add to insurrection. The only thing we would really have to add to miss this is like, what? It's like, what? Why is Tom Hardy in this movie? And that would be it. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, but yeah, as I, but as I said earlier, um, the reason why we're not going to watch the movie is not because of the quality of the movie itself. It's because I feel like the, those movies are tied into next gen. Which this movie really is too. It probably, I probably shouldn't have been watching this movie too, but because I was told that by more than one person that... First Contact is a really good movie. I'm not going to wait, like, a very long time for me to get, you know, two whole series... Yeah, two two entire series finished mm-hmm. for me to watch, you know what I mean, that, you know what I mean, these the, these two movies. But I didn't watch both original or Next Gen, so it's like... Well, Next Gen is when it matters, but, like, you know, if I'm going to watch, I'm going to start from the first series. Yeah. So, like, that's going to take a long time. So, you know what I mean? So, like, because I haven't watched the Next Gen series... I didn't. I just don't feel. I feel like kind of wrong, watching. You know, what I mean, the rest of the next gen movies, because I feel like I'm missing. I feel like I'm missing things. Like, like I had to refer to Nick to certain scenes because I I didn't understand what was going on, and even as you said, you know, what I mean, there's a lot more insight once you watch the show, that will make this make sense. It makes it make sense, but it doesn't make it good. <laughs> but that doesn't matter. The point is that that's not the point. It's not what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. Yeah, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that specifically is a, I'm not, I'm out the loop, and it doesn't make sense for me to watch movies that way. I mean, yeah, but that being said, this was my introduction to the Next Generation cast was this movie. But you know, but you chose not to watch it out of order. You know what I mean? That's not really. Uh, that's not really. I don't feel right personally watching it out of order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not really supposed to. Yeah. You know what I mean? But fair enough. You're watching it for your own. I'm watching it for the channel, and I don't feel right watching something, and I don't have any of the prior stuff mm-hmm. it's like starting at at episode at and you know i mean when you start a show you start at the first episode you don't start at the third season you know mm-hmm. what i mean yeah. and we're doing this i feel like i'm starting at season 11 mm-hmm. or season 8 you know what i mean 9 you know what i mean even watching this felt wrong because i don't know about the borgs yet i'm not aware of like i felt a lot of more conflicts when it made sense some of these characters i really don't know anything about like i don't, I don't know too much about data i don't know too much about whoopi's character don't know too much about Jonathan Frakes. I know I know a little bit about Picard. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, like, so it's like, I, found, I just feel wrong watching these movies. Mm-hmm. The only reason, only reason, because I heard Contact so good that I think it was so many good reactions. So I'm, 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 I'm just going to stop at Contact. I'm, I'm going to stop at, I'm going to stop at Contact. But that's it though. That's just because I have such good things about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, for example, if I already watched Next Gen, mm-hmm. I'll be finishing the rest of the, the movies because it's a franchise. Yeah. Because we told, we should have stopped at the last movie because that is the Kirk stuff. Yeah. Kirk you know what I mean? We shouldn't Plus be watching this. You know what I mean? Because I didn't watch Next Gen. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. this is tied into the movies. I mean, mm-hmm. tied into the shows. Yes. You know, because these, these are no longer Star Trek movies. These, these are Star Trek Next Gen movies. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But as I said again, the only reason I'm really watching this is because this leads into the next and the next one I heard is really good. So, 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? At first, I just was a plan to stop at insertion because my whole my whole mindset was I'm a, the whole Star Trek movies is one a long franchise. You know what I mean? But truth be told, it's because that Star Trek one is not really the same franchise. It's the same universe, but it's a different set of movies. Yeah, it's just named Star Trek. It's a different yeah. setting, effectively. It, exactly, it's a whole di- it's a whole different everything. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, that's what setting means. Oh, but so setting means location, shit like that. No, so setting means location, it means time, it means a lot of things. Sure, yeah, and then setting, everything. From, from characters to location to time frame, yeah, it's a yeah. whole different universe. They turn Not in the same universe, but like a whole different... It yeah. makes, it's essentially a spin-off. The, so it's, it's po- a, the a, a politics spin-off. of one era is very different from the politics of the next. It's very, they're very different times. Exactly, so it's like, so it was a whole different thing. So yeah. it's like, I felt for this specifically more... At least with the original old the OG Star Trek movies, that is a whole like a lot of time passed. Yes, you know there's I mean? a massive gap in between then the in the last episode. So it's like I feel like I'm watching things anew. You know what I mean? Yeah, but just directly didn't need to watch the first series. This for that seems like directly tied into the show. Yeah, I watch things. I feel like I watch the show. I will understand. I have context. Mm-hmm. And if, and I don't like watching things without context. That's why watching like sequel stuff and. Prior to stuff is frustrating because I know me personally I have to start from the beginning because mm-hmm. if I don't then I don't I can't, I can't see how far this show or this movie has for franchise has gotten yeah. you know what I mean it just it's wrong and it's a it's a taboo it shouldn't be done like that you you shouldn't watch things outside of its order if you're gonna watch them you start from the beginning you know what I mean mm-hmm. so yeah so I think I read enough about this I think I made my point yeah all right cool yeah. Overall, this movie blah. Next movie better. Other anyway. Li- hey, I don't. I know a couple people that kind of like this movie, but no one that's their favorite. If it's somehow your favorite, please let us know in the comments like it, below. They're not, they're obviously, they obviously, they're obviously kind of not, not, no, no, nothing wrong with them particularly. But they probably, not, they probably have a good taste in movies because this is this is oh uh, they're, uh, they're such diehard fans that they don't like anything. It's more the it's more the diehard fan bit. It's more the diehard fan bit more often than not. When I see people actually liking this movie, it's like, they are, the, like, the only times I've ever seen people defend this movie is when they really like the Deus stuff way too much. But I don't think Deus stuff was all that good. It's all poor me. Though. This was not, wasn't even that done that well to me. That's, I why, thought it, that was kind of that's why I said they like it too much because it doesn't deserve, it doesn't deserve that much. It doesn't deserve that much fucking fame. I don't think it that much. I don't think any fame at all. I don't think it was done bad. I don't think it was done good. I think it was done annoying. And it's just funny to me that's like, it's like, you know what I mean? He's like, but that's I'm not keep going because I'm not too aware of data, so I don't know how much progress he's made throughout the story. But I feel like after eight seasons, seven seasons, you know what I mean? Like, he would have figured this shit out. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? But I guess you, you made a point that he feels it's time to now, because he got to a certain point, it's it's time for him to yeah to, to it, put the yeah, chip in. He feel, yeah, he felt like he got, into, he got as far as he could without it. But so the, now it's hard to use it. But the whole reason he put the chip in because he couldn't understand sarcasm and shit like that. I felt that over the seven years, maybe he should have like got a better handle on that. No, like I, no, like he tried. Like he do, like he makes love ever to fucking do so that. So pretty much the whole entire series, he didn't change much in terms of what he can what he can achieve emotionally. No, he has. It's just less drastic of a change than you'd expect. So he made a tiny change in seven years. He made. He didn't make a tiny change. He made a lot of subtle changes in seven years. Like what? Like he is like more, mo- like he is more aware of what other people are feeling more often than not. That I mean, this he, he, he couldn't it. sense basic sarcasm and jokes. No, sarcasm is something. Because sarcasm is an emotion where you're kind of like feigning, like you're feigning one emotion to like while actually conveying another. That kind of duplicity kind of messes with him sometimes. But when you're being very, but when you're being very direct about what your emotion is, he can read that pretty easily. So he, he's only mastered over seven years. He's only mastered simple emotions. Yes. Okay, and this movie's tackling more complex emotions. Yes, that, this starts his character arc down a more complex path where he. Oh okay, yeah, I, I guess that's interesting in itself, but overall, I still don't think it was done well. Yeah, and I, 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 stop bringing up the fact I'm not tying it. I'm sorry, just in that in, in, alone, nothing to do with anything else in the story. The play mm-hmm. story, I'm talking about just that alone. It could have yeah. been written better. It could have been. Because the only time it was really all that funny was when he was he was at the bar. It's like, oh, I hate this. That's like the only funny part yeah. of the whole thing. Yeah, it's the only thing that I thought was cool about it. Yeah, the whole Mr. Tricor thing was annoying. Him singing, him singing was okay. Yeah. Whatever. 
But yeah, we're rambling long enough. Anyways, please make sure to like, subscribe button. We will catch you next time for Star Trek First Contact whenever we watch that. Yep, see you guys.